Hi guys, and thanks for joining me for part three of this configuring layer three switching and inter VLAN routing task. So we left off in part two, folks, whereby we configured, we started to configure our inter VLAN routing. We added VLANs to our layer three switch. We configured our switch virtual interfaces. But at this moment in time, guys, what we don't have at the moment is we don't have inter VLAN communication. We have VLAN in the same VLAN communication because if I go to, for example, let's let's just do a simulation mode here for a moment, guys. If I try and do a test from, for example, VLAN 10 here, so again, this is a staff VLAN, over to another staff VLAN, what we'll actually see is that this should work. We'll have an ARP message going across to find out its mapping of its layer 3 to its layer 2 address. That should happen. And then what we should see is that ARP response should come back and what we should be able to do is we should be able to ping basically between our staff VLAN to our other staff VLAN. So you can see this is working here, guys. So again, this is a test that is working correctly. So this is all, this looks great. Okay, so I've got a green tick. We've got communication happening between our two staff members on this VLAN 10. Now, what I could do, guys, if I just delete that for a moment, we can see that that's been successful. If I just try that once more, I just want to show you guys, again, how you can dig in to understand this. Now that we've got an ARP address, we've got it basically a mapping, we don't need to ARP again for it. But what I want to just show you here, guys, is watch how this, if we dig into this message. If I go into this little message, if I look at the inbound message, notice that coming into this switch, we didn't add any sort of tag. However, leaving the switch, because this is going to need to go over a trunk port, and this is being configured in advance, basically what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add an 802.1Q tag onto this particular frame. So in other words, what we do is we add basically a little identifier or a stamp to say, hey, when you leave to go over this trunk, you need to basically add an identifier of 10, VLAN 10. So that when basically the message gets over to our friend here, to, to this basically end switch, it will say, oh, who, where do I need to send it? Out VLAN 10, 20 or 30? Well, it will say, let's have a look at the identifier. And it will say, oh, it's got 10. I'll strip off that tag and I'll send it out. So if I notice here, guys, watch when I go to the outbound. Have a look, 802.1Q. I can see, look, this TPID, this identifies that an 802.1Q tag is being added here. This is the protocol. This is the IEEE standard, guys. And what I can see is that this identifier or this stamp, this basically A identifier is identifying basically our VLAN identifier. If I go into my calculator, guys, and again, this should show us. So again, if I go into, for example, if I go into uh, base 16 here, and if I type in A, what does that identify in decimal? Well, it identifies 10, our VLAN 10. So again, once I, once I go next, it's gonna keep that tag. Again, it's gonna keep the tag as it goes across this next, basically. So again, if I look at the outbound, again, it's got that A identifier. So if I go next again, once it gets to this um, switch, what's it gonna do? It's going to basically, it's still got the tag identifier. It knows that it's in VLAN 10. It's going to send out this now to our, basically, computer without this tag. So it's going to strip this off and only send it out to our friend PC3. So again, look at the way they, the switch. This is a 802.1Q. It's a switching tagging language, okay? Once I go next, it's going to send that out and back. Again, just to prove this, guys, to, to show you this. So again, successful message. If I try, for example, with, let's have a look at our faculty. If our, one of our members of faculty wants to speak to another member of faculty, if I do a test from here, again, an ARP is going to happen. That ARP is going to go across. It's going to come back. And then basically what we should be able to do is send our ICMP request. Notice this time, guys, as it goes into the switch, Notice last time we had basically an inbound normal Ethernet frame, but now what we're going to see is we're going to identify it with a different tag. What tag are we going to identify it with? A tag of 30. So what I can do, guys, is you can see it's different now. See this 1E is being identified? So again, if I bring up my calculator there to convert between um, our, so our base 16 to um, essentially to decimal. So if I type in 
e and convert that back to 10. Watch the sequel. It should equal 30, our VLAN 30. And there we can see it, guys. So what are we doing? As this switch is going across here, it's going, okay, your, your port of VLAN 30, I need to tag it with VLAN 30. So off it goes, guys. Cross the trunk links, and then it's going to only send it out port on 30, VLAN 30. And back it will come. So we've got successful messages. So now, guys, we can see we've got connectivity between our different VLANs. So you might say, okay, cool, but hold on a second, are we finished? Well, the answer to that question is, no, we're not. Why not? Because at, the, at this moment in time, if I try to ping between VLAN, for example, 30 and VLAN 20, is this gonna work? Well, the answer to that question is, no, it's not. So watch what happens. When this guy ARPs, what's gonna happen? Rather than ARPing for its default gateway, look what's happening, look what's going on. It's going over to its friend, over to the other PC, over PC5, the other port in only VLAN 30. It doesn't see any other ports to send this out to. But what's essentially happening here is this ARP is saying, hey, tell me, I've got, a, I've got to route this message, this ping message, over to another network. So what it's actually shouting out here, guys, is it's saying, hey, who, who has the MAC address of the IP address 192.168.30.254. But because at this moment in time, guys, this isn't a trunking port, it doesn't send it up here to, for example, this layer three switch that has the IP address of 192.168.30.254. It only is able to send it out to the trunking ports and then out to the interface on port on this uh, VLAN 30. But this computer receives it and says, hold on a second, I'm not, basically, so if we dig in here, guys, if we look at this, look at the target IP. The target IP address is 192.168.30.254. This computer receives it and goes, that's not me. I'm basically 30.2, okay? I can't help you here, buddy. And again, if we continue to do the, the, the basically pings from any other VLAN to another VLAN, so from VLAN 10 to VLAN 30, we're gonna find the same problem. So what are we gonna need to do, guys? We're gonna need to configure our switching and also our trunks now. So what I'm gonna do, folks, guys, I'm gonna go back to real-time mode. I'm gonna go into my layer three switch. I'm gonna make this nice and big so we can see it a bit better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, right, I now need to configure this interface as a trunking port. So I'm gonna go conf T, and what I'm gonna to need to do is, I'm gonna to need to say the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna statically configure it as a trunk port. So I'm gonna say um, interface gigabit zero slash one, and I'm gonna say switch port, switch port, mode trunk now remember guys before i commit this um, and i've le left out an either before i've committed this what i can also see now again did i have that command up here back here with our let's go all the way back up here look at the way this was an access layer port belonging to vlan one only what i want to do is i want to change that now i don't want this guy being there okay in gigabit zero one why he needs to be a member of more than one VLAN port. That's why I'm making this guy now a trunk. So again, if I was, just before I press enter to this, if I look at the tr the ports that are trunking now, if I can say do show interface trunk, we're going to see that it's not doing any trunking. Look, it's blank. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say now that I'm still under gigabit zero slash one, I'm going to go switch port mode trunk. Now what that's done, guys, is look what it's done. It's basically enabled each of these interfaces. These have now come up, 10, 20, and 30. Do you remember the way the interface, the protocol status was down? If I now do a show, let's go out of here and do a show IP interface brief. Have a look at this now, guys. Look at this. They've now come up. Do you remember before? These were down, down, and down. What we've now done is we've said, hey, this port now is now gonna be a trunking link. So basically it said, oh, it's now trunking. I could have frames coming into me on VLAN 10, 20, and 30. I need to be aware of this. And they bring themselves into an up state. So I'm not entirely finished here, guys. What I now need to do is I need to say, well, if I'm doing, you know, I, I've now configured the trunk mode, I need to be thinking of what port am I gonna put the native VLAN? So I'm gonna need to agree between my layer three switch and my layer two switch. So again, I need to choose a native VLAN. So in this case, I'm gonna choose my native VLAN as port 99. 
I could have picked 999, I could have picked 50. Really what we want to do is we want to pick a port that's not being used on, the, on this particular network. So again, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say switch port. So I'm going to go under interface gigabit 0 slash 1 again. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say switch port trunk native and then I'm going to pick my native VLAN. Now again, what I need to agree on is I need to pick the same native VLAN here and the same native VLAN here. So that's going to be the important thing. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say 99. And then what I'm going to do, oh, so it didn't like that. I've forgotten something, guys, haven't I? I need to use my question mark. What word did I forget? I think I forgot the VLAN word. So in this case, you can see using that question mark, I can say VLAN. Now I should be able to choose my VLAN. So I'm going to say 99. So what I'm going to do now say, guys, is I'm going to say enter to that. And then what the last thing I need to do is I need to basically say that the, the configuration or the switching language that I'm going to use on this particular trunking port is 802.1q. To do that, I'm going to use the statement switch port trunk encapsulation basically dot 1q. Okay, and what this basically is saying is it's saying I want to use 802.1q as the language of my tagging language on this link. And once I press it, OK, or enter, it now says that. Now, I am getting some mismatch errors. You can see here now, guys, I'm getting some CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol. It's basically saying, hey, you've configured the native VLAN of 99 here. On this switch that's directly connected, there's a native VLAN configured of 1. So it's going to continue to give me these mismatched messages until I fix that. So what I've got to do now, guys, is I've got to jump over to my to my switch over here. And you can see that this is the, in this intermediate state. There's a little problem here. So I need to iron this out. So what I need to do is, and you can see I'm getting similar messages on this side. It's saying, oh, I've noticed a problem. On the other side of the link, it says the native VLAN is 99. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there's no sort of conflict between the two native VLANs on either side. So I'm going to go conf t, I'm going to go um, interface, and again, I'm going to go into gigabit 0 slash 1. So this is the interface here on this port. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say switch port mode trunk to make it a static trunk port. OK, and then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to make sure that I basically change that native VLAN to, to the same. So I'm going to go switch port um, trunk native. And I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm going to say VLAN and I'm going to say 99. And once I do this, guys, I should stop those error messages coming up. So now what I'm hoping is after a little bit of time, now that the, I've, I've configured this as a trunk port, I'm hoping that this now will go green to an up state so I'll be able to communicate. And there we go, guys. Just as I was saying that, we've now got connectivity. I've created two static trunk ports on each side of the line and I've created the native VLAN so that they talk the same. So again, remember what that native VLAN is. is. So now if any ports are on 99, when that computer talks over this trunk link, it won't tag the frame for 99. It won't add in an identifier 99. Why? Because I've set up a native VLAN in that port. That's the only port that it won't tag. Okay, other ports it will always tag. Okay guys, so in this video, what we've seen is in this part three, we've now done some verification. We saw that PCs could communicate across you know, from, from the same VLAN, fine, but they couldn't communicate basically um, between um, VLANs. What we've done is we've created a, you know, a manual trunking port and we've changed the native VLAN and we've done a similar process over here on this particular layer two switch. Okay, please join me for the next video, guys, where we're gonna actually get our inter-VLAN communication working between our different hosts. Thanks for viewing and see you soon.